Welcome to the Latin American Perspectives Podcast. My name is Tomas Ocampo, Outreach Coordinator at Latin American Perspectives. Today we will be discussing the main theme of the March LEP issue, Urban Latin America, Planning Latin American Cities, Dependencies, and Best Practices, with editors Clara Isabel Zurita and Thomas Engari. Clara is a professor of urban planning and director of the Latina Latino Studies program at the University of Missouri, Kansas City. She recently edited Transporting Your Latin Americas, Liminal Places, Cultures, and Powers There. Um, Tom is a professor of urban policy and planning at Hunter College and the Graduate Center, City University of New York. He recently co-edited Zoned Out, Race, Displacement, and City Planning in New York City. They are both editorial members of Latin American Perspectives. Good morning to you both. It's a pleasure to have you here with us. Thank you very much for having us. Thank you. It's great to be here. All right. So for my first question, just very generally, can you sort of briefly summarize for our readers the theme of the March issue and if you like some information on the main issue as well? The major theme of the issue is planning in Latin American cities from a general, broad, progressive and political perspective. It follows a series of urban planning reforms in a number of countries that have altered the shape of urbanization in Latin America. It includes a, a broad analysis about the continuing role of dependency and northern capital in shaping the cities. And then it includes many individual case studies, for example, Mexico's neoliberal housing reforms that have been very common in many countries across Latin America. It includes transportation reforms that started in Brazil and, and Colombia and are being marketed as best practices all over Latin America and uh, in other parts of the world including North America. So it's a, a mixed and broad collection of articles about individual countries and cases, but it also attempts to analyze some of the broader underlying currents in urban growth and planning. Not only the March issue, but the incoming May issue deal with urban planning in cities of Latin America. And what we wanted to highlight is the fact that urban planning reflects historical dependencies that come about from colonial times and that persist up until our days and continue to impact or, and produce and reproduce inequalities in our cities today. So much so that we're referring to urban planning in Latin America as peripheral planning or, and peripheral capitalism. And uh, what we offer in the issue is several case studies from prominent cities in Colombia and in Brazil, Mexico, and Chile in particular, that discusses these more recent neoliberal reforms and the impact that they have had in housing, transportation, and other social policy matters. I also wanted to sort of touch on what you write in the introduction, that the aim of planning should be to guarantee the right of the city as a fundamental human right. And you also conclude that we should have, or we should move from best practices to just practices. Can you perhaps provide some thoughts about how cities across Latin America can become more just? A fact, if you wish, regarding the so-called best practices that are being promoted by major institutions such as the World Bank and the United Nations and others. And uh, the problem with these so-called best practices and is that they are usually policy ideas that are packed and transported from a place to another without proper critical adaptation. And they are essentialized to a point that sometimes they lose their age, their age in terms of the effectiveness that they can have in producing more just cities. So what we want to convey instead 
is that policy mobilities and policy transfers should happen in a context where there is a lot of critical reflection about it so that they would make sense in the context that adopt those ideas and that adapt them in manners that are sensible to the new context and that produce the type of effects that we would want, which is to advance in terms of sustainability and justice in our cities. So just practices would be a much better approach to this so-called packaging of best practices. The thing about the right to the city is indeed the editors, the co-editors of these issues, Tom and Gotti and I, but also all of the contributors agree in the sense that urban planning as a discipline should be contributing to the emancipation of the people in our cities, promoting justice, promoting sustainability. But oftentimes, unfortunately, planning has been put in place to produce contrary effects. And uh, planning is the one that is advancing neoliberal agendas that are privatizing services that used to be public and uh, you know, rolling back social net uh, that produced safety for our cities and citizens before and things like that. So uh, the contrary, again, intent that the discipline was born with and, and is supposed to be doing. So we want to come back to the essential goals of the discipline and figure out how we see that it can really deliver in its promise. That is one of the important searches behind these issues. Yes, I think main push and movement towards just cities is coming from community-based resistance to the role of capital and in displacing many neighborhoods and communities and remaking the city in the form of high-rise luxury uh, enclaves and low-rise luxury enclaves. And so the real thrust for uh, reforms is, is coming from the housing movements, the neighborhood movements, the grassroots movements that have fought back to be able to stop displacement and to shape the future of their city. The role of best practices is very important because very often what happens is some of the innovations that come from the bottom up get turned into marketable gimmicks called best practices that are marketed around the hemisphere and around the world as essentially technological fixes. So the professionals and the professionals in government as well, especially, are uh, very adept at trying to convince us that the solutions lie with these technological changes and not with a reorganization of power relations in the city. And uh, some, some of these best practices include, for example, the bus rapid transit, a system that started in Curitiba in Brazil and has become widely used in Colombia and Bogota and in many other cities around Latin America and the world. The um, ciclovia, the Sunday cycling in Bogota. And one of the most interesting best practices started at the grassroots and the most complicated, of course, is its uh, participatory budgeting, which began as the result of a very popular left local government in Porto Alegre, Brazil, and then spread to many other cities. And now there are over a thousand cities around the world that have adopted participatory budgeting where local people essentially get engaged in distributing a portion of the city's budget. And this is a very contradictory reform because sometimes the proportion of the local budget is so small that it really wastes a lot of the participatory energy of people and obscures the real power behind the budgets. And then it gets marketed as a best practice when it really ought to be a fundamental shift 
in power relations. And that shift in power relations is what's needed to guarantee the right to the city. I also wanted to ask a little bit about the uh, May issue, and could you tell our readers what they should look forward to when the issue comes out? Yeah, the May issue uh, includes a number of other individual country and city studies. It includes more examples of organizing and resistance. There are a number of pieces that deal with new role for citizenship, new interpretations of citizenship. I would also like to mention that we're working on a book that will be co-published by LAP and Rauman Littlefield Publishers that I am editing, which includes chapters from the March and the May issues of LAP and a few chapters from the 2013 urban issue, which I edited. We will continue to explore these matters of housing, transportation, but also a greater inclusion of citizenship under conditions of neoliberal, neoliberal urbanism and neoliberal governance in cities in Latin America. And I would want to highlight the fact that when we put out a call for papers for this issue, we imagined that we were going to have to receive just a few manuscripts, but it turns out that there was great interest and we got an affluence of manuscripts, uh, so much so that uh, we sorted them out in three issues, and it's, there is an ongoing interest. We might continue to consider this topic of urban planning in more issues to come in the journal, and it is also important, I think, to highlight the fact that many of the contributors, I think most of them, are very young researchers, some just starting their careers. So it also points out to a large and growing audience for the journal that is interested in this urban planning topic. Well, that's certainly great to hear, and we'll have certainly lots of material to have conversations over. But unfortunately, we're going to have to leave it there for today. So thank you both for providing us with insight into the very dynamic landscape of Latin America. Thank you, Thomas. Thank you. It's been a pleasure. And that is all the time we have for today. So thank you for listening in to our podcast. Please don't forget to add us on Facebook, Twitter, and Pinterest, and all of our other wonderful social media sites. And join us again in the summer for our next podcast. Hasta luego. Thank you.